everybody, welcome or welcome back to B and B Anime. I'm blue and I'm not bleeding. <laughs> That's Brad. I was <laughs> for the audio only <laughs> listeners of this, they're gonna be very confused. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no joke. Yeah. <laughs> blue scared the absolute <laughs> shit out of me whenever she joined the call because all I see is the red velcro. <laughs> But part of it is actually covered up by other yeah. bandage. So I see it and I'm just like, um, are you good? <laughs> it's like, do you need to handle that before we get into this? Like, I, I realize this is our time to record, <laughs> but also, mate. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's just Velcro. I had the option of red, white or black. And I told the lady to surprise me and she gave me patriotic colors, she said. So I just need a little maple leaf. I mean, you're an artist. You can do it. <laughs> yeah, right now. Yeah. Good job. Yeah, yeah. Left-handed. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. it'll be great. Okay. Or also, it's Japanese colors, That is too, true. So it's, it's also it's England colors. Doing. If you forget Britain, just do England. St. George's Cross. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh-huh. I've got, I like... know my uh, geometry. <laughs> it's just the red middle <laughs> bit. If The blue's Scotland. So if you get rid of the... the Scotland, Scottish blue. Wales doesn't get a flag. They don't get to be part of it, apparently. <laughs> but that's all the. Because isn't there yeah. just isn't there just a dragon? Yeah, is it? Right? It's a red dragon with green. I don't. I don't. <laughs> no, I. I don't. I can't do math. It's fine. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that's what I got. I'm a for. new plastic thing now. Yeah, she's a she's a cyborg. Yeah. The notice the ASMR of the clacking of the cat. The Velcro. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, that's some that's some good yeah, ASMR. Right. Just, yeah. just right into the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love what this podcast is <laughs> just divulged into. <laughs> I could take it off and show you the wound if you want to see, but I don't know if you get grossed out. I won't get grossed out, but we should save that for after. The I was going to say, recording. video would because get demonetized or whatever. Yeah. Like, not that also, we're monetized anyway. I don't anyway, know how to like... blur. Like, I'm a fucking <laughs> idiot whenever it comes to video editing, so we can we can do that I a, afterwards. I think I have a picture of it. I can If I have a picture of it, I will text you the picture. Fair enough. Um, that is acceptable. I think I, I may only have a really gross picture, though. That's fine. Um, I'm not squeamish. I watch horror films for fun. Oh yeah, I have a I have a really gross picture. If you want to see that, that's fine. Okay, I'm not bothered. Uh, come in your way. It doesn't look like that now. It's cleaner than that now, but yeah. Oh, that's not terrible. It's pretty icky. I mean, it's not the worst thing I've ever seen. Yeah, that Honestly, was that's that's very interesting. The way that all that's set up. <laughs> like how it's like healed differently in certain areas. Yeah, the bottom of my scar is healed super, super well already. Like mm-hmm. the this section here doesn't yeah. have any scabs on it or anything. It looks really good. And then it's a little bit scabby going further up. Mm-hmm. And then the two portholes where they put the camera, they look like fully healed scars. Like they look super good. Mm-hmm. But yeah. So are you going to get like a, uh, you going to get a super fancy tattoo to cover up the scars? I don't know. I've been thinking about it. Put my phone down. I've been thinking about it. I was thinking about, because I was talking about it with my colleagues at work um, back mm-hmm. in the city. And they were like, oh, maybe you could do like a vine that like goes in and out of the scar and then goes in and out of the hip scar that I have to accompany them. Or Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. My brother was saying I could get like a little, like, um... Darth Vader or something, so it becomes a lightsaber or like a sword <laughs> handle or something. I mean, uh, fair. Um, I I don't know yet though. It's it, I yeah I don't know. We'll see. I'll see how it heals. Um, mm-hmm. because my physiotherapist has a similar surgery scar, and hers is super thin and super clean. It's obviously healed quite a bit, like a couple of years now. So hers is like you know white and clean and and nice, but it's like a like like a pencil line. So mm-hmm. I don't know how wide the scar is going to be. And depending on how wide it is, we'll probably determine. If it ends I'm up the do. same way, just get a little piece of chalk tattooed. Under yeah. It. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about getting a, a, turning it into a ruler, getting measurements on it. It's like, 
wherever I go, I know exactly how how long anything is. I need to measure anything. This big. Right, yeah. (laughs) You can't trick me. I'll know exactly how. (laughs) I can measure. What is that? How big is it? Hang on. Hang on. (laughs) Never be lied to again about size. No. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, me. That's great. (laughs) But yeah, um, healing super well. I can, I'm now doing finger exercises. I still have a lot of tightness in my last two fingers. Um, because mm-hmm. obviously those tendons were the ones that were like moved <laughs> yeah. so they could get to the bone. And uh, and so I have to like push down on these two fingers with 5% strength. So like barely even resting my hand on them. Just, ah, to, like... just my hero. You've got Deku just like, I can only <laughs> use 5% of my power. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, 100% um, to push down on those fingers. And then I can hold things under one pound now. Nice. Yeah. So yeah. you can pick up a pencil. <laughs> yeah. Although not really. I have to use this fat tube thing with a hole in it that I like stick the pencils through and then it's uh, like a foam tube and then uh, I can grip onto that. Because, uh, yeah. I see. I mean, I it's can fine. hold it like this, but I can't put any force on it. So Can't write with it. Oh, yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Good enough. So, Good yeah, enough. Still, still no rotation, um, but... Looking healthy, good. I have to do more scar massage because my scar is sticking. So I didn't know why I had to do scar massage. They just said you had to do it. I was like, I don't know. I thought it was like getting blood to the area or something. But it turns out that scars stick to the bone. And so, like the scar tissue. So you have to like move it around so that it doesn't stick. So that then the skin is still like fluid when it's all healed. Otherwise it'll like end up being too solid and like not. And it'll end up, you'll end up like, we, have you ever seen those scars where like they, they crease when a person moves, they don't move with the skin? Uh, yes, actually. I yeah. Have. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. So it's to prevent that. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So that's why you do scar massage. I have learned something today. Yeah. So I have officially had probably one of, well, definitely up to this point, the greatest moment I've ever had as a Concept? dungeon master. Oh, no. <laughs> That's like the concert? <laughs> no, no. That is Tuesday. So that is literally... Oh, okay. Right I didn't know this was going to go next I'm, week. I'm okay. so excited. I'm so <laughs> fucking pumped for that. But no, so I've had my greatest moment as a dungeon master up to this point. On Tuesday, we did a one-shot just to kind of gauge our friend group's interest in actually doing an in-person campaign to see mm-hmm. if some of the people would actually be interested because I've never tried D&D before. Mm-hmm. And so during that process, um, like we went through like a whole combat slog. There was eight of them playing. Mm -hmm. And so I had them all create level three characters or some of them I've made characters for because they've obviously never played. So I just, you know, took their input on what they wanted and then just crafted their character for them. You know, blah, 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 bullshit. Anyway, so I faked a campaign of like them traveling and have them get ambushed at night and so we went through like a massive combat slog and like it took a while like that whole bit of combat i think took over an hour Mm -hmm. but we got all the way through it and for one uh, i rolled incredibly poorly (laughs) i cast a fireball that could have wiped out almost all of them a fireball cast has the potential of at the lowest level you can cast it doing 48 damage. I did 13. Uh, <laughs> I rolled terribly. <laughs> but so I ended up not killing any of the characters. Our bard killed our row. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. They um they cast a thunder wave on them while they were unconscious trying to hit like the big bad of that particular group and crit them. So they just straight up died. Like they didn't even get a chance to roll any saving throws. They were just dead. <laughs> oh. Oh no. <laughs> it was it was bad. Which granted that rogue did not have a lot of health at all. So it was it was not that great. But yeah, just Straight up killed them in one fell swoops. That was oh. interesting. But so the the thing that got me is that, like, finally, the most inexperienced person at the table, our um, 
worship leader at church, it was his wife that literally got roped into playing. Like I literally just had like spare character sheets that came with one of the D and D sets that I bought. And like, I just handed her a character sheet. Like I handed, like I held out five of them and I was like, pick one. (laughs) So they just picked out a random one. And she just so happened to be the one to get the last hit on the big bad of the group. And so like just that final, like, how do you want to do this? And like with that, like she, you know, tried to explain how she wanted it done. And then I reach across my little DM screen and reach out to the little figure and flip it back to like flip it over and the entire table just exploded like everybody was like yeah Yeah. (laughs) and at that moment i was like i i have genuinely never felt so proud like taking this group of people that either have no D &D experience or like just trying to learn and like just getting that type of reaction i was like oh my heart is full oh that's so good like like that's one of the greatest things i could have ever have hoped for like that was so good yay so yeah that was that was so much fun i i can't wait to play more i've been in just such a D &D mood Easy. Yeah, <laughs> I just like did that and then put too much pressure on my pinky. Yeah, <laughs> so I was like, eh? <laughs> but yeah, no, that was oh, that was so good. I'm I still feel like I'm riding the high from that because I was just like, oh, it's so good. Yeah, but no, that was fun. I enjoyed that a lot. I'm just I'm having way too much fun with D and D here lately. Yeah, so... no, it's good. It's really good that you're getting super into it and like you haven't been DMing. I mean, like what, like five sessions like how many have you done now like something like that yeah like five sessions total and some of those online Mm -hmm. so like i'm slowly like getting more comfortable like in my dming shoes with like crafting like how i want to do things and like how to make things run Mm -hmm. now granted i i will say i did fudge that encounter just a little bit Mm -hmm. because i grabbed a random uh card out of my pack of um like creatures and npcs packages that have like a zero to some sort of amount of challenge rating and so that's just what i made the big bad but i was like 200 health no (laughs) i'm gonna cut that down to like 70 (laughs) because otherwise that could have taken a lot longer especially whenever they were they had access to level seven spell (laughs) oh yeah (laughs) so yeah no 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 but no it was good i enjoyed it a lot i'm uh, I just want to play more and I will be playing more very, very soon in a lot of different avenues. So I'm very, very excited. We are as far as the B and B gaming goes, we are still waiting to hear back from a couple of people, but it, we're working on it. Yeah. Um, may end up getting uh, the person that backed out on us back into it. Okay. Because it, they're enjoying it more. Okay. That's good. Yeah. So yeah, we'll, it was uh, just a we'll lot see. of stress. For, it's a lot of stress for newbie players um, in general. Mm -hmm. Um, especially for um people that have like certain personality styles like um out of our group like i know for me whenever it comes to like what we put out and stuff like you know you know me well enough at this point to know like i am incredibly like i'm such a perfectionist whenever it comes to the content that we put out like everything has to be done like to a certain specification or i just don't feel comfortable putting it out because i feel like i gotta put my best foot forward and some of the people playing with us like that was their mentality and whenever it comes to D D, like whether it's role play or whatever like you kind of got to drop that yeah a little bit because it's so much of D D is just reactionary because you never know like how people are actually going to play mm-hmm. and it's literally just like figuring out like how you want your character to be played and then going from there and then just you know figuring out combat and all that other stuff so you know hopefully we can get some you know more rp stuff nailed down and get them a lot more comfortable with playing and then get them back but that's that's wishful thinking but we're, we're getting so close yeah yeah it, it <laughs> it's really one of those like it's one of those things where you just kind of have to do it more mm-hmm. um and you can't criticize yourself as much as like i mean we're i feel like introverts spend so much of our time um thinking back on interactions that we've had because it's not where we're comfortable Mm -hmm. So we end up reflecting on those so much more than we like, and and just spend so much time in our own heads being like, oh my God, I should have done this. I should have done this. I should have done this. And we end up putting way too much pressure on ourselves. And then um, 
small things that other people don't even remember end up like sticking in our brains and we just keep replaying them. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of thing that really you can't do with D&D and improv in general because you have to try your best to remember that you aren't your character. So, Mm -hmm. like, you can put up a full mental separation there between you and who you're playing and the role that you're playing so that because I found that's something that helps me in improv in general it's something that I haven't seamlessly translated over into D&D yet but I mean I've been enacting my whole life and that was something that really helped me was like once you step out on that stage or whatever whatever you do out there wasn't you like that was that was who you were playing that was the role you were in Mm -hmm. and so if you like don't react the way that you would prefer to react when you're looking back on it. Well, it wasn't you who reacted, it was your character who reacted. So Mm -hmm. you can't judge somebody else's reactions. And it, like, gives you that little bit of an excuse to just be like, well, you know, it wasn't a perfect reaction, but my character isn't a perfect person. They're flawed. So, Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, it just, yeah, gives you that little bit of leeway. Yeah, it it really does now granted i have zero acting experience (laughs) whatsoever but i've always like prided myself on like just my ability to kind of go with the flow and like although not being improv trained by any means like i enjoy the challenge of actually like having to improv and like base myself off of other people's reactions and pretty much like that's been my entire streaming career Mm -hmm. is just putting on a mask essentially and just like becoming you know a character now granted it is still me Mm. it's just me turned all the way up yeah with like some you know added flair bits here there but i mean again it's all one of those things where at the end of the day it's all still a performance yeah so it's just all just you know whatever you you know, feel like you can bring to the table, but also it's just reacting and not all reactions are correct in your eyes, but in the moment, like those, like we will make mistakes. Reactions aren't going to always be what you want it to be, Mm. but as you like grow both as a performer and just like grow in, you know, improv situations in general, you learn how to like, you know, ebb and flow through certain situations. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. And I don't know. It's like it's it's tough because you want to like it's tough. The hardest thing is letting yourself go, letting yourself be able to just like be a bit insane, you know? Because we have that embarrassment blockage that stops us from you know fully nerding out. And it's one of those things where you kind of have to force yourself over that hurdle and it's something Mm. I struggle with all the time of like just being like you said dialing it up to 11 um because it's so much easier for you to scale something down if you feel like you're going crazy than it is for you to scale it back up again you know so try and (laughs) start your character out at like 110 percent and then have those pullback moments where you flesh out your character and who they are and and all that kind of stuff. And I'm saying this is someone who doesn't find this easy to do and, like, something I wish I could be better at. But I really want to, like, be one of those people that can sit around a and d table, you know, and and be, like, a complete insane character and um, and have, like, a really good in-depth storyline and and connection with everyone around the table and build the story together um and and the only way you can really do that is if you trust yourself and your character Mm -hmm. so yeah i mean at the end of the day like nobody is going to know your character better than you Mm. so it's just you know choosing like when and where to do or like what to put forward but i do agree like it is so much easier to scale back than it is to like put your foot on the gas again Mm -hmm. especially well it's also one of those things too to where it's always the hardest like put your foot on the gas in the first place because anytime we've taken like breaks from the podcast or i've taken breaks from streaming or hell even whenever like i was back in my singing days before any of this shit existed it's always like that first time you do something or Mm -hmm. do something again it's just 
it's that moment, that fear of what if. Yeah. But then like once you do it, it's like, okay, like I can do this. So let's like put everything to the floor. But it's like you said, the second you back off, it's hard to get started again. Yeah. So sometimes you just gotta you just gotta take the leap. Yep. And just do it. Yeah. And if you haven't tried D D yet and it's something that you're interested in trying, there's so many websites out there that have links to cafes that do like training days and like I don't know like if you're living in a big city you'll find one easy enough a gaming cafe um even decently in like decent sized cities out here in the country they have them so um you should definitely do a quick google if you want to find people IRL if you want to find people online there are so many groups so I highly recommend checking out D&D if it's something that's been on your radar and you haven't gone to it yet you can really make some lifelong friends um with this Mm -hmm. game Yeah. And I mean, like, if anything, like, take the story that I told a little bit ago, like, these are people that either got a drug along or B had never played before. And just that, you know, camaraderie that builds with like trying to take down like one single task. Like, just, again, like, that's a feeling that I know I personally won't forget. I haven't gotten to actually speak with these individuals about these things. Mm -hmm. But I look forward to actually having the opportunity to have those discussions with them. Mm -hmm. Um, Actually, I'll be seeing them all at church tomorrow (laughs) to actually have those discussions with them. Just to see, because I do want to pick their brain now that they've had time to settle on it and think back about everything and just pick their brain. Because again, like I, I really enjoyed that. And so I, I want to figure out if they enjoyed it too. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. See if you can make it a a regular thing. That'll be fun. Yeah. Which, That'll be, that'll be three campaigns that I'll be doing at that particular point, (laughs) Wow! which I'm actually playing in one of them. We found a DM Ah. for one of them. So I'm actually going to be full, full on uh, method acting Nice for that one. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to be playing a, uh, I'm either going to go wizard or cleric, depending on uh, how it goes, because if we don't have a healer, then I'll be the healer. But if not, I still want to go like down the spell route because I've always played paladins. Like I've always been the tank. Yeah. And so I kind of want to play that, you know, character that's incredibly vulnerable, at least as far as like taking hits goes, Mm. because wizards at level one have like seven health. You could breathe on me wrong. Just (laughs) Just dead. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just, Just so dead. So I'm looking forward to like trying to just get a handle on that and also like trying to fully figure out how I want to play my character because I've thought about going one of two ways with it. Either one, just like incredibly reserved and like held back and like slowly letting my character open up over time. Or as we talked about earlier, like turning it all the way up to 11 and being this cocky overzealous piece of shit out of the crew. But uh, oh, both of those characters are so good, though, because like the cocky character then gets the tender moment where they reveal, like I don't know why they're so arrogant. You know, mm-hmm. um, the fact that they like I don't know maybe they they had a, a friend who like when they were children were really close with, but everyone put all of their faith into the friend, and then they ended up feeling really insecure, and so they started like trying to like make up for it with their attitude and then everyone didn't want to be friends with them anymore and they lost their friend or whatever and now they're just like I don't really know what to do and I don't need friends anyway and blah and then you end up with like this kind of gruff cocky person and like or you could go with like I feel like the anime route in this circumstance would be somebody who's really attractive like a guy who's really attractive and then everyone's really shallow in regards to them like it's kind of that's kind of similar to Yamada today um and (laughs) like the fact that like all of the girls want to be his girlfriend but like they don't actually know anything about him at all Mm -hmm. um yeah and so but he's like the opposite of cocky Mm -hmm. He's completely clueless. <laughs> but yeah, it's like I'm kind of torn on it because Walker and I are also like trying to work on like characters together for that because we kind of like we wanted our characters to know each other in some capacity. Yeah. And Walker had brought forth like potentially being like brothers or lifelong best friends. But then I poised the idea of depending upon like how I want to play my character, if I wanted him to be my son. And like whenever I found out that my wife was pregnant, like I left. Oh no! I had like I had like no way of 
like I didn't feel like I was ready and considering like I had my powers at that particular point, but also being level one, like not being right. like, sure of my powers. Like I'd be like, I'm too much of a danger yeah. for this situation to like want to try to put them in harm's way. Right. But the kid feels like you've abandoned him, but you kind of have, but out of your protection, but also fear and yeah. Okay. Yeah, like, either that or, like, even, like, there was an accident where, like, I I somehow magically managed to cast Fireball, and, like, my wife got killed, like, in the process. And so, like, just, like, figuring out a way it's to giving do me that. Frozen. Like, what sort of... That just reminded me of the plot of Frozen. <laughs> uh, I don't know where I drew this inspiration from. That, <laughs> that very well could be a possibility, like, somewhere in the dark recesses of my mind. You just want to build a snowman. I, I do want to build yeah. a snowman. Yeah. Unfortunately, I can't do that in the south, so I'm going to have to I'm gonna have to make a trip up north yeah. at some point if I want to build a snowman. I was going to say, you probably won't have much luck out here either. It's too dry. We get dry snow. It doesn't stick to itself. I'll be fine. <laughs> be fine. I can bring some glue. It'll be fine. <laughs> All you get up here right now is smoke. Oh, yeah. Fires. <laughs> yeah. Biggest wildfire, I think, in in forever. It's like 100,000 acres, 150,000 acres or some hectares, acres. I don't know. A lot. I was going to say, but hasn't that, like, unfortunately been, like, a common theme over the past, like, few years? Yeah. So we have had... I think in the past 10 years, we've had the most expensive Canadian wildfire. Um, I think that was Fort Mac here in Alberta, where it like burned down a whole city. But then we also have Kelowna in BC right now that's under fire. And they just, I think they have evacuated a good portion. But the biggest one is in Yellowknife, um, Mm -hmm. where it's like, there's not many people that live up there. So it's not a lot of like housing damage or they evacuated the city. And then it was... Like, they, I don't think the fire actually got to the city, so everyone was fine. But there's only one road out, and they had to, like, helicopter a bunch of people out because it's so isolated. Um, mm-hmm. Like, it's tundra. Um, and so, like, they managed to get everyone out. They pre like evacuated them way early, so everyone was fine. And they managed to get the horses out as well. That was a big story. It was like, they didn't know what they were going to do with the horses. But then some people from Alberta drove up there and got the horses and drove back down. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the big thing is that that's, like, the it's like a huge ecological issue. Like it's like, I, I'm going to figure out how, how, how big is that? You can't, that's awful. Having only one thumb is hard. Okay. How big is yellow fire? Um, the Northwest Territories. Uh, uh, yeah. So 97,000 hectares. And I think there's about three acres in a hectare. Hector? Hector? Oh. I don't know. Like, big, big. Big, big, big. That's a lot. Big, big, big. That's a lot. So that's the biggest issue is just that it's, like, going to wipe out all of the environment in that area. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's not good. Yeah. And, yeah, so my hair is bugging me. Why do we have hair? Get rid of it. I mean, I just cut mine today. Even my <sighs> beard. My beard is now shorter <sighs> than it was whenever we started video. Ow. Easy does it. <sighs> struggling with the headphones <laughs> ah but it's the cat ears you're magical it's fine yeah yeah but they're heavy and bulky and they're hard to put on <laughs> <laughs> i still need new headphones mine are <laughs> mine are slowly dying more oh, no. and more. oh no we'll be sitting here talking and then like i'll just hear ringing in one of the uh things Sides. i can't do fucking one Oh, it started again. Oh. But yeah, I I hear it and I'm like, um, okay, I'll get a new one soon. I promise. Maybe. <laughs> At we'll, some point. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, it'll be fine. I, I got this. <laughs> uh, oh. Um, but yeah, speaking of paladins and good looking people. <gasps> My love story with Yamada <laughs> Kuna, level 999. <laughs> Uh, anime titles are getting longer and longer and longer. I swear. They 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 really are. We haven't we haven't done anything like incredibly ridiculous yet, but we're we're getting there slowly but surely. Yeah. Uh, do, 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 do. Um. So my love story with Yama the Coon, the level nine hundred ninety nine, or other English title of loving Yama the level nine hundred ninety nine was initially a manga written by Mashiro 
It began publication on March 7th of 2019 and is running to present for a total of seven volumes. However, if you want to read it in English, you're stuck until January of 2024. That's whenever the first volume will be releasing in English officially. Officially. So if you're like me and yeah, yeah, you can you can read it elsewhere. But we don't we don't condone it, but <laughs> Oh, I love the video feature and the fact that we could just make subtle shit like that. Like, <laughs> yeah, we don't condone that at all. Absolutely, mm. do not read or watch things for free. Yeah, don't. definitely, definitely does. <laughs> I, I absolutely do not do that. <laughs> absolutely not. No, 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 no. <laughs> but yeah, so you can. Uh, which I really want to collect the manga for this because I don't want to wait because I really fucking enjoyed this spoiler. <laughs> yeah, it's really it's it's good. It it, it, it was very good, but anyway, we'll we'll get to that shortly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so um, the anime was directed by Morio Asuka, Asuka, something like that. I don't know. I can pronounce things. Um, had its original run from April 2nd of 2023 through June 25th of 2023 for a total of 13 episodes. Now, for those who are wondering why I left out the studio, it's because it's the studio that has a tendency to leave out second seasons. Uh Uh-huh, Madhouse. Yeah. Um... Which is the reason Blue will never be getting her second season of that one rugby anime that we watched. Yeah, that I... That I can't remember. All out. Yeah, yeah, that one. <laughs> Had to go through the files then for a second. Because <laughs> I was sitting here looking at all the stuff that they've done, and I was like, hmm, I don't see it, so yeah. I'm just going to put it on blue, and hopefully <laughs> she can figure it out. Yeah, it was oh. all out. <laughs> Funnily enough, they did do um, My <clears throat> Love Story, which is <laughs> initially what first comes up whenever you try to search for this anime. <laughs> yeah, if you just look up Yamada, it comes out way faster. Yeah. Um. Yeah, you can watch this on Crunchyroll, and it is rated APG-13, which is an accurate rating. It has, its main characters are high school, college age, like um, 18 to 20. So um, it it fits within that range, but it's also appropriate for a slightly younger audience. I think BG-13 fits it quite well. Um, The basic premise is that uh, Akane, who is... I'm going to say our main character over Yamada. Yamada is the love interest of the main character more so. It follows yeah, Akane. Yeah, it's kind of like co-main characters, yeah. but it's definitely pretty much all from uh, Akane's uh, point of view. Yeah. She has recently um, been broken up with and she had um, started playing this um, RPG to kind of get to know this boy that she liked and she was with the boyfriend and so they were playing games together and she got really into this RPG. So anyway, she ends up making friends in this guild and it's kind of about them meeting up IRL, forming relationships with each other, like friendships and relationships and everything. And then um, her and Yamada, who is like this, he's a a pro gamer, but he plays um, FPS uh, shooters for like, that's what he does professionally. And then, um, what's the name of the game? Uh, Forest of Spirits. Oh yeah, FOS. Yep. And so then he plays FOS as kind of like his, like relaxing game, <laughs> but he's yeah. like maxed out his level and it is like best of the best in that game as well. So she's like bugging him for advice and stuff, um, but he's like top of the game. So it's a, a kind of that's how it all starts, and then it's just relationship progression over the rest of the anime. Um, it's a it's a, a rom com, um, very nerdy. Actually, has some interesting kind of um, lessons that are like hidden within the anime that I think are really like good lessons to have. It there's some. It's a fairly shallow anime in the sense that like it doesn't cover like incredibly heavy, crazy topics, but it does have some like depth to it and i enjoyed it a lot for that oh yeah absolutely Mm -hmm. um yeah yeah so we got maths or are we just holding off on maths um i was gonna do maths but writing is really hard right now so there is no maths because i i can't all right (laughs) i'm not a calculator kind of gal i like i mean for basic stuff but like when i'm trying to do the 
I need to write it out as well, you know. So mm, calculator. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just in the habit of writing it out, and then when I can't, I find it. I have to visualize it. I don't know. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I have to. See I don't it. know either. I have to see it. Okay. Oh my god. Oh my god. I have to like. Uh. What the hell? What the hell? It's been... When are we going to have our, like, doll back here episode? Like, what the hell? We need to. Um, I blame teachers, because teachers always made you write things out, and then when you're at the point where you just need to use technology, you're in the habit of writing things out. Just use technology. You see, for me, it just kind of depends on, like, for one, like, if I can write it out, I'll write it out until it comes to division, because then writing out division is stupid. I never learned how to do long division, um, so I divide strangely, but it works, so. See, I know how to do long division, it's just, I hate it That was the, the <laughs> That was the one thing that was skipped in my education, because when I emigrated, I was 10, right? So I uh-huh. went into first year of middle school here because I skipped a grade, so I was a year younger than everybody else, um, because English curriculum is harder, but we had gotten to the point of, like, studying how to do long division there because we had spent some time in geometry and algebra and stuff. And so we'd kind of skipped over long division, strangely. I don't know how the English curriculum works, but it was like, I don't know. It was weird. So I'd never done it in England. And then it was like last year of elementary here. So it was in the year that I skipped. So then I ended up not doing it here either. And so then (laughs) it was like on my, we had in grade six and grade nine, there's like a government exam. I think they're called like, PATs or something where it's like they they're doing it as an assessment um provincial assessment test I guess PAT there you go um <laughs> and uh and so it was on my P- grade six PAT but I failed that section because I didn't know how to do it I was like and nobody taught me in grade six because we were supposed to have already learned it in grade five so still don't know never learned we, uh, <laughs> we learned that in third grade Really? Yeah, learned cursive and learned multiplication and division. I knew, like, division. Like, I did, like, because we did, like, multiplication tables and stuff, and then you would just do division by that kind of thing. And I knew shorthand division. I just never learned how to do the long thing where you will write yeah, it you put the where you put the number and then the bracket thingy and then yeah in there and then no i don't know how, how to, do... to like break it down step by step yeah i don't know how to bring it down because in the uk what i was taught was they called it short division um so uh, an abbreviated version of long division where you just do it up here and then you write the little three and you carry it across very similar to how you do multiplication where you or subtraction where you carry it across so I learned how to do that, but I didn't. I never knew how to bring it down, and like I didn't know what the steps were, so I couldn't do like decimal places or like really complicated ones because you need the visuals for that. So yeah. I would get to a certain point, and then I would get stuck. Ah, I see. Yeah, and then by that point, we were using calculators in class, so I didn't give a shit. <laughs> and yet our teachers were like, "Ah, oh, you won't always have a calculator with you," and yet now. We have these fucking things with us everywhere we go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Me sitting here with my dress up darling background, if that'll focus. Focus. I have trees. Oh, that was me. <laughs> Come on, focus. Oh, I have a moon. Oh, That's our current moon. moon. Yeah. Every time I just hear moon, now all I think of is a silent voice with just moon. <laughs> moon. Okay. It's like, I love you. Moon. <laughs> no. <laughs> My brother saw the Aurora Borealis oh. yesterday. He took a picture oh, of it. It was really cool. Fancy. Yeah. Look at your brother go. Look at him go. Walking home Look at, at him 1 a.m. from the liquor store and seeing the Aurora Borealis. He works there, by the way. He doesn't live there. <laughs> I, I was more concerned of, I was like, walking home yeah. from the liquor store at 1 a.m. But then I was like, wait, it's not winter yet. No. <laughs> I got real concerned no. for a minute because I remember that you're back in Alberta. I was like, wait, no, it, it it's just September. It's fine. I mean, it snowed this day, September 2nd, two years ago, but it's 30 degrees today. So hot. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, hmm, I'm the, this is not freedom units. 30 degrees for me is very, very cold. <laughs> no, hot. Uh, what is 80? that, like 75, 80 ish, somewhere around 76. There? I don't know. Hey Siri, what's 30 degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit? 30 degrees Celsius is 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh. Holy shit, that's hot. Yeah. 86. For Canada? Sweet. Hot. Uh, yeah, very, 
very warm. About as hot as you get. What's the temperature here today? Because now I am curious. Because I barely went outside. Although it's, I could not be bothered. It's 7 p.m. now, so it's only 22. But it was. Oh, it was 86 was the high today. Oh, so, twinsies. Um, yeah, twinsies. <laughs> Look at that. All right. And that was our so, yeah. section on the weather. <laughs> and now... Over to blue with traffic. Uh, first of all, we'll need to put the chicken cones on our head so that we can talk about spoilers. Then I will Waka. tell you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then we will go through our episode breakdown, uh, where we go through a general gist of what's going to be happening throughout the main portions of the anime, where we talk about the staple moments that caught our eye. After that, <laughs> we'll go through... The <laughs> we'll go through the pros and cons of the anime, talking about the animation, sound design, uh, OP and ED, and finish up with our overall thoughts and opinions. Over to Brad. We've already been talking about dicks with the first segment. <laughs> so for the first episode, um, she got dumped. <laughs> <laughs> You get cheated on, you get dumped. Oh, just the overall, just the overall visualization of the of the chick that she got cheated on with, like in her brain. <laughs> oh, just the over dramatized bits of it. I was like, why? Why is this a thing? <laughs> it's it's uh, it's like you I. Don't feel like he got enough. Oh, this is skipping ahead. I don't feel like he got enough comeuppance. I want him. He cheated. I want him to be sad and miserable. Like, why is he still happy? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> as somebody who has been cheated on multiple times, these motherfuckers deserve so much punishment. I was gonna say, like, <laughs> like I'm skipping ahead. We already have to play chicken hats on, so I'm assuming that you've watched the whole season. But, like, Yamada having that moment where he brings back the bento boxes and he's, like, I just wanted to check on her and everything. And he's clearly doing it to soothe his own anxiety of, like, did I fuck with her real bad and, like, I've fucked up this person for life or whatever. Because cheating is one of those things where it really destroys your trust for a long period of time. Like, like it's not something that, like, I think... There's this social uh, expectation that if you get cheated on, you just move on to the next person. It doesn't really last with you, but it really is one of those things that will impact relationship after relationship that you have because you just, once you have that distrust in someone that you really cared about, you can't build that back up again very easily. It takes a lot of hard work. And even still, you're never going to be completely that level of, naive almost again because your body has now gone into protection mode you know Mm -hmm. and so you're doing everything you can to preserve yourself over your relationship you know it becomes a point where it's like you have to put yourself first and and so this show was actually pretty good about showing not just how the cheating was what impacted her the most more than how much she liked her boyfriend I feel like she got over her boyfriend pretty quickly it was the lasting impact of him cheating on her that was still affecting her like long term Mm -hmm. but also it shows like her friends being frustrated with her still going on about it like come on just like find somebody new get over it and then when she does find somebody new being like what was wrong with me to make them do that like how can I fix myself like all of those questions are so normal and I really appreciated them being shown here but I the selfish part of me just wants him to have been miserable (laughs) at the end of it like I just want like because Yamada dealt with that situation very maturely and just like kind of subtly told him off. And then he was like, yeah, I'm being selfish on I and then walked away and she didn't have to deal with him, which is great. She didn't have to deal with him. But can we just like see him after the fact? Like, it can we, the last scene of the anime be him and his girlfriend sitting up at a cafe, sitting at a cafe together where she's now telling him, hey, I've fallen in love with somebody else in a video game. Like, <laughs> can we have a full circle? We we went to two very different places with that. You went there, and I was like, I want that motherfucker to get rid of her by truck. I mean, I, li- I I thought that, and then I was like, that's too far, and had to like, because I was like, can we get him hit by a bus, Regina George style, and then had to like 
<laughs> Turn that off in my brain because I was going to say that. So no, no. You see, I I was there because I'm like, it's anime. Like Trunk Coon is real. It's a thing. <laughs> no, because then he'll get isekai, and we don't want that. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's one of those things to where I like I relate to that on such an emotional level in that. Like, thanks to, like, prior relationships, like, I've talked about it here, so I'm not going to sit here and go into, like, full detail, but having two relationships, both, like, over three and a half years apiece, then getting cheated on in both of them, like, that, like, that still bothers me yeah. a lot to where it's like, what, like, what did I do wrong? Yeah. And even... Even with the last one as well, with like how all of that ended as well, like it still leaves me with the lasting questions of just like, what did I do wrong in those scenarios? Yeah. And it's like, and this isn't like a conversation that I can just have with people. Like I, I commend Akane for like having the wherewithal to actually ask like her best friend of like, you know, what's wrong with me? Like, what did I do wrong? wrong to where i can fix that before i go into another relationship because i like i can't do that like just me being me Mm. like i know that there are people that i could go to but i also i have a wherewithal enough to like know the answer to that question and it's not like even with that foresight like i know like what they would say is correct because i can 100 percent guarantee the answer is just going to be like you didn't do anything wrong that was their decision and like they're the ones that fucked up and it's like i realize that but also like that still doesn't help like what i feel yeah yeah because logic and our actual thoughts and feelings are two very different things so you can be very logically it, like understanding of your circumstance but still mm. emotionally be like on a completely different page. And mm-hmm. I think this show was very good at expressing that for both of our two main characters, um, with Yamada having to like kind of come to terms with his own addressing of his circumstances because he was very like <laughs> ostriched, I guess. <laughs> like he <laughs> had his head in the sand. Like it was even commented by one of the other characters that he um, Tsubaki that he wasn't like he was kind of actively choosing to not see anybody else around him um mm. but also wasn't aware that he was well like was aware that he was doing it but wasn't emotionally aware that he was doing it yeah i don't know yeah i just liked that i liked that it showed the the realities of how cheating impacts um a person mm. and like how it just kind of came in stages yeah too, to where like it was to the point to where like she never had those questions until she was ready to move on yeah like actually move on yeah and it was at that point where she's like um like before i can do this like before i can take that next step like i need to figure out like what i did wrong before i can do that and again like that was another one of those moments where i was like fuck me man yeah because <laughs> again been there done that so i'm like fuck yeah <laughs> Yeah. Damn you show for making me like have uh, and I do this to myself. Like this is my favorite genre of anime. <laughs> no, like I adore rom-coms, but it's also to the point where it's just like, I don't know, like maybe it's just my brain like giving me like subtle reminders of like these are natural feelings that this is okay. And maybe that's why I'm like drawn towards yeah. that shit. But it's just like, fuck, man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, I think this anime would be very validating to, I mean, to yourself, but also to, like, those people that are just slightly younger than us, in the same age range as these characters, um, for, as, as well for people like Momo, who is Akane's best friend, who has all of this pressure on her to get married super young and start a family right away, and so she's, like, putting herself under a lot of physical and emotional stress, trying to, you know, search endlessly for this partner and even putting herself in in precarious situations to meet a standard that she has with the expectation that she has because of her parents' generation, you know? And that's something that I've seen a lot of the times. It's something that I've kind of felt myself as well because, like, my mom was married at 23. Like, I'm two years older than she was when she was married and, like, imagining (laughs) myself, like, being married for two years by this point. Mm. is ridiculous but like it is it's a it's a pressure that's there it's a societal standard and and i think that 
um, everybody feels it. Um, and it was nice to see it kind of represented in media in this way, especially, you know, like, I feel like it happens to women slightly younger than men because they have the thing of your body clock's gonna wrap up soon if you want kids, you gotta have them now. But I definitely think it does happen to guys as well. Like they'll get their moms breathing down their neck being like, hey, I want grandbabies and stuff. So like, it's a it's a thing for, for everyone and it's um, not exactly a pleasant feeling. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, and it's because like I see it around me, like with the, with the relationships that are around me, like, especially like even within my family of like people like breathing down their necks of, when am I going to have my great grandchild or Mm -hmm. my grandchild or all this and all that. It's just like, we, like, we can make those decisions like on our own. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, we shouldn't be rushed as individuals to, like, jump into those scenarios. Like, especially given, like, the current state of everything. Yeah. Like, I understand why, like, everybody's, like, putting off, like, having kids or, like, you know, like, forcing themselves to get married and everything else. Because it's, oh, but yeah, it's just one of those things where I don't understand the, like, need to, like, rush through life and rush through things, because life already goes by so much quicker the older we get, and, like, I, like, I can have, like, a full, like, psychological breakdown of, like, why I think all of that happens, but that is 100% besides the point I'm trying to make here, but it's, you know, don't, like, the pressure is real, and I don't see the point behind the pressure, like, for me, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it's, I don't know. It's just, I guess, there's a, yeah. There's a lot of relatability in all of this. There really is, yeah. I think, like, all of the characters have a level of, of being very relatable. And I really enjoy how each character's personality traits fit their age range. And you see that incredibly well with Runa. Oh, 100%. Yeah, because she is... Like, last year of middle school, um, just about to go into high school, she's kind of that 12, 13, maybe 14 age. Um, and her... She's kind of been coddled by everyone. But uh, she then is very... Like, she's also been very isolated from her schoolmates. So she doesn't really know how to socially interact with anybody else. She doesn't have any friends, um, IRL friends. She is... Um, a kind of an extroverted introvert she like has been around a lot of people that are her brother's age and so doesn't really even like know how to interact with people her own age but also is still very much her own age so she's got this level of like maturity but also being incredibly immature because she hasn't grown with her peers but has kind of jumped a stage and so she's missing like this foundation underneath mm-hmm. Um, yeah. within her social interaction. And so you see her becoming, like, really jealous and then doing, um, uh, like, bullying. <laughs> bullying. <laughs> uh, because of it. But, like, what she's doing is, like, has real-world consequences, but is something that you would see from a middle schooler. But she hasn't quite got the... Like, there's a, there's a, a gap there that she's not... She hasn't learned the, the safety thing, the real-world consequences. Yeah. Um, and she like she kind of started to get that mm-hmm. with the Akane bit. Yeah. It's just she like she needed to have that moment of like, oh shit, that's a problem. Yeah. Now, granted, she's still like it was one of those like one step forward, two step back things. Yeah. But it's still like a step in the right direction. Yeah. So I I really want to see like how her character grows mm-hmm. through all of this because it's. Now, granted, like, I think her character is there more for, like, comedic relief Mm -hmm. than anything. Because her, like, immature rants are, like, for the most part, funny. (laughs) But, again, like, there's still things like that that can be learned from. So, there's my brain fried. (laughs) No, yeah, I get what you're saying. And, um, And I think a lot of those things that can be learned from her character are how we, as, you know, 20-somethings, react to preteens and teenagers um because that was kind of i feel like the main there was there was two sides to this if you're uh, on the pg-13 side and you are watching this as a 13 year old you probably will learn more from runa's story but as someone our age we're learning more from akane's response to runa you know 
Um, yeah. So like, and <laughs> like that situation was super sketch, and I wouldn't have handled it the same way <laughs> that Ark and I would have. Um, that because of the if, just to give some context to everything that we're talking about right now. Uh, Runa set Akane up on a date. They were assuming that they were going to go together and go get coffee and, and they were like going to try and get to know each other a little bit. And then Runa doesn't show up, but in her place, she sets up a super fan of her character um, online and, or well, of her brother's older, her older brother's character online. And he's a super fan and obsessed and he ends up following um, Akane into the bathroom believing that she is the character of Runa's older brother um, Ita and uh, it kind of cuts there and we don't see anything else except like him rattling the lock on the door and it's very very sketch then it goes to Yamada and Ita um, rushing over to try and help her and save her and then turns out that it wasn't that big of a deal and actually like he was creepy but he wasn't that creepy um but still <laughs> it was a very tense episode the, the, that was the most like actual danger that any of the characters yeah. were in throughout the show that was the the like the only thing that i could consider really triggering other than cheating to do with the the show in general and i don't know it was it was one of those yeah it was definitely one of those things where runa had to uh, she i don't know like i just wanted to shake her and be like you could have gotten her in some serious trouble. Oh, yeah. yeah. Which, I mean, again, Ada could have handled a lot better, but also we don't truly know, like, how it was handled mm. either. Yeah. Like, it it was a lot left up to interpretation. Like, we see that Runa definitely learned from that experience. Yeah. But it's, like, still, like, no, that's bad. Yeah. That's very bad. Yeah. Yeah, so that's kind of her as a character. Uh, I guess Yamada. <laughs> we haven't really spoken about him much. <laughs> so yeah, he's a high school senior, the equivalent of third year, about to start his university entrance exams. One thing that I did find interesting with this storyline is that Akane is older by two years. I feel like she's in her second year of university. Maybe? Like, I I got the feeling that she was 19? I think and it Yamada says at one point like she's somewhere 20... between like seventeen to eight. I think he's eighteen, nineteen. Because if I if I remember that, it doesn't specifically have the ages listed, so that's why I'm like I'm not sure. But I definitely feel like it's senior in high school, sophomore in college type thing. Yeah, it's like like I feel like there's a two year age gap. That's that's what I'm feeling as well. Um, which is I I feel like it's eighteen and twenty. If I it, that's how I would put it in my yeah. head mm -hmm. and I thought that was fine I feel like it's kind of two or three years is kind of the max you can get with the high school thing yeah, yeah, um yeah. <laughs> but uh she's still a college student she's still a student Yamada is living alone very independent um and like yeah I don't know like it, that seems very normal I mean especially in anime it's just like all right boy main character he lives alone <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. it would be much more problematic if he was living with his parents and brings home a drunk college chick <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's been done i guarantee it's been done oh what 100 percent like i it's, without a shadow of a doubt i but... bet probably half of the kids in my high school did that but still <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it it like she's not she's in that stage of college where she's not taking her classes seriously. So like first or second year. I mean, she she wasn't taking her classes seriously, but she was taking her studying seriously for yeah. the most part. Yeah, but she went she to like at least two did classes. Her studying. Yeah. <laughs> then she was sick for like over a week, so she definitely yeah. missed all of those classes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but I can relate to skipping classes just to play video games. I, I didn't do it to play video games, but I did definitely do it just because I didn't feel like going in. Uh, I feel like mine was probably a mixture of depression and like hyperfixation on whatever game had just come out. Yeah. But yeah, yeah I'm, I'm definitely blaming depression for a lot of that. Because as soon as that kicked in, I was like, fuck school, man. This was a great excuse. Sorry, I can't come to art class. My wrist hurts. 
I mean, that that is a phenomenal excuse, right? especially considering like you were in chronic pain. Yeah. Over that. Yeah. Yeah. And then they were like, oh, your canvas isn't big enough. Make it bigger. <laughs> like, Do I have to? It hurts. It hurts. Oh, fuck you. I'm actually sitting next to some of my homework. Oh? Yeah. I've got like just like, canvases around. The thing is, is I don't like any of them because they're projects, you know? And it's like when, you, when you're doing art projects within a thing, yeah. and it's like... I mean, it really is one of those things to where, like, all of the commission work that I've ever done, like, back whenever I was drawing for other people, just for Mm. shits and giggles, like, I don't, like, I hold no emotional attachment to stuff like that. But the stuff that I've done purely, like, for you or for us, like, that's the stuff that I love. Mm. And I take like great pride in the shit that was transactionally done or even the stuff I did with my like one art class in high school. Like I, I have no attachment to that shit. Like I could give two fucks what happened yeah. with any of that. So I, I get that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I had this really big four foot by four foot canvas where we were learning how to paint on a square because it changes the perspective of everything. And like squares are unnatural and you know, art class stuff. And um, and so I had this giant painting and they were like, if you don't take it home, we're just going to recycle the canvases and wood and shit. And I just didn't take it home. I was like, there you go. It's gross. <laughs> you can have it. Okay. Because I'm never going to paint remember. on it again. Like it's huge and ungainly and like, I don't like that painting. So, yeah. and then what am I going to do with a giant canvas in my one bedroom apartment? Like, yeah, like studio no. apartment. Uh-huh. Yeah, that was... No. I also remember you telling me about that and like how ungodly it was to like carry it around and like take it to the take it on the street car. Like, like that. I was like, I don't envy you at all. No, and it was like you had to paint on it in class, and then I had a wet painting on the streetcar on my way home, and I'm like, what do you want me to do? I can't. Yeah. Like, yeah. It was also. Awful. It- It would be one of those things, too, to where, like, if you were closer to my size and as broad as I am. Yeah. So, therefore, the painting would, like, you know, at least, like, be similar size to you. So, it wouldn't be taking up, like, too much extra room. Yeah. But it's for you, like, that painting was, like, three times as wide (laughs) as you were. So, I'm sure... Like, it just felt, like, so much more unnatural to carry around just because it's so awkward. It was huge. And it was, like, like late... When was it? It must have been late autumn that we were working on that project last year. So it was just, like, this this awkward thing, walking around in the rain with giant painting. Like, yeah, not great. Not great situation. Yeah. (laughs) Like, no. No, don't recommend (laughs) No, <laughs> ten out of ten. Do not do that. <laughs> no, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I okay, Yamada. <laughs> Somebody in the comment section described him as having ultimate riz, and I agree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, but it's so true though. Like, just that man's allure for having to do absolutely nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He there's a couple moves that he has that are that give you that feeling of like kicking your feet on the bed feeling Mm -hmm. yeah one of them was when he took the hair clip out of her hair when she was asleep yeah yeah and you're you're just sitting there beforehand and you're just like take it out take it out take it out take it out and he does (laughs) and then they have that like hair slow motion moment and it's like yeah perfect great (laughs) that's that's one of those moments where i don't know if you've seen a trend on tiktok where it's like uh what like what girls find attractive in men and it's like moments like that. Like it's like um the girl showing like films and stuff, it'll be like, it wasn't this moment where he had his shirt off and was being hot and sweaty, like everyone was trying to make everyone think that girls find attractive. It was actually this moment when he was holding a mug with his hands. You know, like that you know what I mean? Like it's like I, I haven't seen that particular okay bit but yeah. i've like seen similar bits like well, yeah uh, i can't will... remember the, the genre of what it is but it's it's basically the equivalent of like like what they try and make you find attractive in media versus what you actually find attractive in media is the purpose yeah. the um but i have seen like the 
clips of like them like kicking on the bed, but it's been like anime yeah. moments. Like, have you seen the trailer for uh, the Shibuya arc of Jujutsu Kaisen? Not the trailer, no. Yeah. There's a bit of like Gojo like heavy breathing, and like the entire <laughs> anime fandom just lost their shit. Yeah. Yeah. over that of like i saw so many tiktoks of just like that heavy breathing clip and then women just like diving onto their bed and just like kicking <laughs> <laughs> so i was like i i get that yeah it's like, yeah mm, very pretty man breathes ah <laughs> yeah so like, I, I have the bit for that hang on <laughs> there we go <laughs> so the hair clip moment then you have the um slams like she's leaning on the door he closes the door and locks it moment yeah that was the first one that stood out in my mind whenever yeah. you were talking about that because the neighbors were outside being loud as shit plus yeah. the dog so he's like K-thunk! and then locks it it was whenever he locked it to where i was like oh yeah <laughs> yeah uh absolutely that moment and then the last one you actually have quoted is the <laughs> <laughs> the i'm busted with the cheeky grin yeah, that at that bit, whatever it happened in the show, it's just like, oh, like I I like that a lot. Yeah. Like that's probably one of my favorite lines in rom com history. Yeah. Like just mad, mad props for the writing on that because that was so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So those like the, and there there are other moments as well, but those three were like the standout moments to me while watching the show where I was like, Okay, that's that's freaking cute. Like that's yeah. That's a that's a moment where like if that happened to any girl I know, they would lose their shit. Like that's yeah. like peak romantic moment. Yeah, one hundred percent. Like I get that. Um. Yeah. Also, second couple to ship Momo and Ita. Yeah, like I I definitely get that. Which I think like that's an official ship, whereas Akane and Yamada have actually sailed. Yeah, they're like, that they're, one's long gone. They're sailed. But yeah. also that meeting between Momo and Ada, like in episode twelve, where she's like, Hey, I'm looking for a husband. You're attractive. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is one hundred percent how I saw that go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like they're going to like officially meet and then she's going to be like, hey, I'm looking for a husband. Marry me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I get it. Like, they would be cute together. I like, think I, they would I, be I too. I could go for that. Yeah. And then Strawberry Man. That man's just such. Yeah. He's fucking adorable. Yeah. yeah. Until he no, goes I into agree. a dungeon and then he got very scary very quickly. <laughs> Just being a character that's, like, this big as well is so amusing. (laughs) You have to zoom all the way in just to see. Yeah, like, that perspective in the anime where it's, like, it's showing the arrow, but there's literally nothing on screen. And it's, like, micro level. It's just, like, (laughs) it's so good. (laughs) I, I enjoy stupid little bits like that. Yeah, me too. Uh, and then my third ship is Tsubaki and the friend that was trying to set her up with Yamada. I mean, honestly, like, I I could 100% hope for that. Yeah. Like, that would be, that would be good. Like, the kind of, the, the kind of ship where it's, like, they separate for college, they go to two different colleges, and then, like, they end up meeting up at a high school reunion a couple years like, down the road, and then they reminisce over it, and they're both laughing about how dumb it was, and then they get together, and they're, like... 25 yeah. or whatever like that's mm-hmm. the kind of ship that i have for them like long-term ship as opposed to like you you know what that kind of reminds me of like that whole scenario what uh do you remember the bit in i want to eat your pancreas where the main character and the best friend of sakura like end up going to her grave mm. and like it was in the epilogue where they go to the grave and she she offers him a piece of gum and he's like, Oh, when did you start taking up gum? And she just kind of like laughs it off because there's that one character in the film that's like always offering gum to everybody. Mm-hmm. Like that's what I get from that. Yeah. Yeah. Like those kind of vibes. It's like whoop. <laughs> one of those yeah. moments. Fully. Yeah. I feel like because I feel like Tsubaki needs to find out who she is as a person still. Yeah. She's because it was kind of one of those moments where 
when she confesses confesses when she confesses <laughs> to Yamada <laughs> about all of the things that she likes about him after Akane has just like built him up again with like these are the things that I like as you as a person because you don't think you're cool but I think you're cool and she hasn't like confessed to him but she's telling him that like the parts of him that she really cares about and respects mm-hmm. and likes and then Tsubaki comes and she confesses and then t- sell- tells Yamada all the things that she likes about him and the difference between them was so well done yeah. because Tsubaki is trying not to be like those other high school girls that were around Yamada who are only seeing him for the surface level attraction that he holds Mm -hmm. and she's trying to be that friend she's trying to be so much more than that she's trying to like him more deeply but then when she does confess to him it's still pretty surface level yeah you know like she does confess a little bit more in the personality base, but a lot of the things that she says that she likes about him are visual things. Like when his eyelashes flatter, when he's confused or the way he looks out of the classroom window, like they're not how good he is at gaming even. Like that's a skill that he has rather than who he is as a person. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so they did that so, so well to draw that distinction between the way that Akane likes him and the way that Tsubaki likes him. Yeah. Also, I thought that confession was going to go like a completely different direction after it mm-hmm. started. Because at first she had the whole bit of like, you know, I like you and I've liked you for a long time. And then you see Yamada start to react to it a little bit. And then she goes to the, like, I've always admired like how you play video games. And it's like, it, it took like a complete curveball. And even yeah. Yamada's reaction was like, wait, where is this going? <laughs> I know. Yeah. It made me think like, does she misinterpreted? what this is and she's actually just going to tell him that she really likes him as a gamer like yeah, i was like, like I... I was like is this a comedic bit like it it took me a while but i think the reason why they did that was to show how surface level her yeah. like for him was mm-hmm. yeah you know and i think showing yamada's confusion in that moment was also a very good choice because it shows that he's also realizing it like he took her feeling seriously but then he's l- hearing this confession and he's like you don't like me as much as you think you like me, Mm -hmm. you know? And also like it took that for like him to like fully like realize his feelings for Akane as well. Yeah. Cause like, she's saying all of this, but this isn't like what I'm hearing, like, isn't what I want. It's what I heard earlier. Yeah. And what I'm hearing doesn't reflect my own feelings. Like what I'm hearing feels like shallow compared to what I feel for somebody else. Yeah. So like, I don't, like I respect you having these feelings, but also like they're not they're not that deep. Yeah. Also, that drawing on the hand bit was fucking adorable. It was so cute. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like that a lot. Ugh. Yeah, which is kind of why I'm okay with shipping Tsubaki with the friend, yeah. uh, because like they're they're like she doesn't. I really I think she like she has a high school crush on him, but she doesn't. Yeah. She doesn't. She's not in love with him. Yeah. Puppy love. Yeah, it's one of those things where she will grow out of it and she'll find the person that she's meant to be with. But I, it was, for her, like a really good character growth moment. Because even yeah. though we didn't know her for very long, like mm-hmm. her actually being able to take those steps to, like, you know, get out of her comfort zone to that extreme, mm-hmm. like that, like that's a huge amount of growth for an individual that's not used to doing things like that especially with just like how like shut off and reserved she was with everyone else so i think there's definitely a lot of room for her to grow whenever it comes to that type of things and being able to move forward past that yeah fully fully um yeah i just i really want the boyfriend to just i if we get a second season i want the ex to like be hit by a bus that would be great <laughs> I- <laughs> Truck coon, bus coon, tractor coon. I yeah. Mean, it happened to Kazuma, although he did <laughs> die pissing himself and not from the tractor, but I mean, hey, it, it, it's whatever. Yeah. I just, I want to see him fully understand what he did because I don't yeah. think he, even with that moment where he had to like confront Yamada or whatever, like he still doesn't get it. Mm-hmm. Like, and like he, he was honest with her and he broke up with her, but he still cheated. Yeah. But it, at the same time, though, like it is very much like still a realistic approach to like what happens in life. Yeah. Because life isn't fair. I know, but I don't it's... want realism. This is anime. <laughs> Get him hit by a bus. I, I'm not disagreeing. 
<laughs> at the same time, like it is still rom com. So if we did get that little side pad of like him getting slammed by a truck, like no, that would have been you, funny. You know what I was hoping for before they mm. showed up at the um, convention, so they knew, like, we knew that she was real. I was really hoping for them to string it out that this was like a, he still hadn't met her in person, online situation, fallen in love with a girl, and then meets a character in person. It's just some old hairy dude. Like that was. <laughs> That was the hope oh. that I had. Oh god, what if it had been Ada? <laughs> it's like dude falls in love with Rudy Hime. <laughs> it's just Ada. Yeah, just yeah, that would be great. Oh, oh. But yeah, I don't know. He just didn't get the he was still like taking advantage of a kindness. But this is another aspect of the show that I wanted to talk about actually. Is that Akane, when we first introduced to her and who she is as a girlfriend we find out that she is the kind of person who picks things up to suit somebody else. Like she puts on her like best appearance all the time. So she's making bento boxes and playing games that she doesn't actually like because she wants to impress the person that she's with. She's doing everything that she, that they want to do, moving her schedule around, that kind of thing. And then with Yamada, She's showing him how she drools when she sleeps and kicks him in the face when she's got a foot cramp. And, like, she's showing him this, like, ordinary version of herself, which is obviously imperfect because she's a human. And that is when she finds the deep emotional connection that she has with a person. And she's done that off of true common interests and slowly building a relationship. But also not like the way Tsubaki did it, where she had the common interests, but then kept her feelings so hidden that there was not even an ounce of Yamada even suspecting that there were feelings there. Yeah. But with Akane, she like was playfully flirting. It was kind of established that there were some possible feelings there. Enough for Yamada to be clued in on to where I think he felt comfortable enough with his uh, I'm busted heart moment. Yeah. Because, like, it was pretty clear that she liked him and he, I don't think, was blind to that. But also, like, she was very authentic in who she was as a person. And I appreciated that aspect of the show as well. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Not that that means that she deserved to get cheated on, (laughs) but it shows that it's going to be a more stable kind of relationship. Yeah, which also, it's one of those things, too, to where I 100% get that. Because in prior relationships, like, I was that person. Mm. Like, I would bend over backwards to accommodate, like, who I was for my partner. And now, granted, like, you, like, there's always going to be give and take in relationships. I don't take it that way. But I was, like, it was never, literally never what I want. Like, it was always what they wanted and would, like, bend to that whim. And that's not, like, how it should be. It is the person that you can, like, be yourself with and, like, want to like do common things together with that individual, which is what you would strive for in a relationship. So that was one of those things to where it was like, ah, I've been there. And like, I like, I've at least grown enough as an individual to know that I would never like go back to that. And that is like kind of one of my common understandings, like going into relationships is like, Hey, I've been there. I've done that. That's not who I am anymore. Mm -hmm. So, but it is like, actually seeing that it's like i get that i've been there i like that yeah yeah and i feel like it's a very natural human instinct to have is to want to put your best foot forward and and you always want to be the best version of yourself but sometimes that creates a standard that you can't possibly hold yourself to for a long-term period especially if like you're doing that to create that happiness like for that individual but you're Mm -hmm. not like fulfilling that happiness in yourself yeah If that makes sense, because we like we've had this conversation with people before because there are currently like people still in our lives that are, you know, doing like that particular thing of they are like trying to like, you know, put so much into their partner that they are forgetting to think about themselves. And it's like that's not healthy because you can't like derive your happiness like from others fully like you need to be able to like either a make yourself happy or like still be able to do things to make yourself happy Mm -hmm. because if that person like ever like falls out like that's not a healthy place to be in like for yourself yeah so there always needs to be those 
moment of it's like okay like you know i will concede but still there are times whenever they also concede or at least like meet in the middle yeah somewhere like it never has to be you know uh we're doing this or we're doing that it's like hey what can we like what can we both do if it has to come to that instead of it just being you know i want to do this you want to do that type thing yeah 100 percent. it's uh I don't know. It's like you've got to find the balance between trying to work on yourself and improving yourself and just putting on a facade. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it's a, so that's what I was saying when I meant that this show had a lot of surface level stuff because a lot of it is just like rom-com stuff. But there are some actual really solid themes throughout the show that are just like everyday real life struggles that I think everyone comes across at one point or another and they address them in a very human kind of way Mm. and I found the show particularly relatable because of that. Some rom-coms that we come across are too idealized or like they're very much a story. Yeah. Yeah like incredibly superficial. Yeah. In a way because it's not like how things would truly play out or it's not like real human emotion in a way with like how things like that would happen Mm -hmm. yeah and um and there's nothing wrong with those like sometimes you just want to switch your brain off and watch something that's dumb and and it's just like just for entertainment's sake but i think there is something to be said for something that is incredibly entertaining but also relatable and i found that with this show 100 percent. like this is definitely one of those almost like kind of once in a like year like once in a generation rom-com type things Mm -hmm. and that Like, it is incredibly entertaining, and yet at the same time, like, there are still, like, good core values Mm -hmm. that can be pulled from it. So it's incredibly commendable for them to actually write that into a story and for it to be, you know, perceived well. But at the same time, like, still create, you know, true moments that, you know, in most rom-coms, like, it would probably make you cringe over something like that. But it was handled, like, so humanely and so true to form Mm -hmm. that it just all, like, everything just made so much sense. 100%. Yeah. No, I completely agree. Um... So animation style. I thought in general animation was really good and pretty consistent across the board. My one complaint is the motion of walking. I found stilted and awkward and I think what it is is that it they the characters didn't have the natural swing of a human. So the legs felt very like they just moved straight forward. There was no like swing to the legs. Like legs don't walk like straight (laughs) you don't walk like that there's like a a overlap not necessarily like runway model where they're like crossing their legs in front of each other but there is like a swing of the hip that happens and uh, it felt stilted because they hadn't quite figured that out yet and I get that there is like it's a it's a drawing but I've seen animations done where they've mastered that a little bit better so it would be my critique was just that i was watching that and that felt awkward well for me it's one of those things to where i've seen a lot of stuff that madhouse has done Mm -hmm. and i know that they like to rely on 3d model backgrounds that they draw over in a 2d style Mm -hmm. but you see a little bit of it in this with the way that the camera pans on some shots to where like you can 100 percent tell it was done in a 3d environment yeah that they did that way so they could, you know, try to uh, give a little bit more depth to the scenes. But I feel like it's because of that environment. It would probably hinder like how the characters themselves that are done in 2D Mm -hmm. would go through those motions because it would definitely like stunt how some things are done. Yeah. It could be incredibly asinine on my part because again, I am not an animator. I don't know these things. It's just things that I've picked up from watching and seeing like how Madhouse does a lot of their stuff. Yeah. And it took things like Overlord for me to realize that because if you're going to do like some things in 3D and some things in 2D, like kind of fully commit to the bit. Yeah. I think that's definitely part of it. And I, and that makes a lot of sense because it was less noticeable in male characters. And I think what made it so noticeable in female characters, specifically in Akane, was the fact that she is most frequently shown wearing heels. Mm -hmm. And when you wear heels, that swing becomes more obvious because your heel-toe motion 
is way stronger obviously your heel is bigger you know I think even guys that wear boots understand that like you know when you put on a pair of boots with a chunkier heel like your heel toe becomes more of a heel toe as opposed to a fluid motion you know yeah so with heels that's even more um of a focal point and because walking and the way people were walking like for instance in the aspect in the the scene where they're in the pub well, after the first meet i think it's probably in the first episode where she's walking to the washroom but she'd just fallen over so she had a cut on her leg and she limps um at a moment like that's a you're drawn to the way that she's walking because of the fact that she limped so you're you're supposed to be watching that it's not like a, a side scene where it's just a clip of her walking it's like a moment in the yeah. show her walking looks awkward and it looks awkward because she's wearing heels and not just bec- like she lives. It's she's walking because she's wearing heels, but her legs are going like this as opposed to like this. And uh, <laughs> for the people that aren't watching visually, that doesn't make any sense. Her legs are going <laughs> um, like each foot is if you stand straight up with your legs shoulder width apart, her legs are staying in that parallel instead of moving one foot in front of the other, you know? And so it's especially awkward in moments like that. I think it probably does have something to do with the 3D um, background, but I also think that it could have been a more simple fix if they had just drawn one of her legs slightly disappearing, you know? Like, if they had just scooted them in and had one of her legs whenever it was, like, the front leg disappearing a little bit, I think would have helped. That was kind of the only thing that I really picked up with the animation style. Every now and again, I would notice really small things like hair length changing, specifically with Runa and Akane, the fact that Runa has like really long hair and then sometimes the hair length would be the same. But it's minor stuff and that happens with all animes. Uh, But like, yeah, for the most part, that was kind of it. Mm. I didn't really have any issues with animation. Again, Mm -hmm. like I noticed those 3D scene bits. But outside of that, like nothing just too overall... Like, nothing just really stood out. Um, Sound design, Mm -hmm. nothing really stood out again. Like, it was, like, there were some moments to where I was like, oh, that's really good. Like, in uh, episode 12, maybe, whenever Mm -hmm. Akane was, like, trying to, or whenever they were on the park bench and she was telling Ada and Momo that she, like, actually really liked Yamada whenever they, like, did the piano version of the OP. I was like, ooh, I like that. But outside of that, like nothing was just substantial. The OP was good. The ED was decent. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. OP was good. Yeah, and ED was like fine. Uh, there are a lot of ending credit scenes. So if you watch this and you didn't watch the um, scenes after the end credits, go back and watch those. A lot of them are pretty cute. Some of them actually have connections to the main plot line. So yeah. make sure you watch those. Oh, one more thing about the animation. <laughs> Specifically when Runa was crying at one point she made like a big like wide lip motion and then she was like gonna like wail like open her mouth and cry really loud but they'd drawn her wearing lipstick or like a gloss or something um and so she has like the slight like not an outline but like the color differentiation of a lip whereas normally in anime characters they don't have a color differentiation it's just like a black line so she's just black line and then she has this like pink uh for her lip uh but then she's crying and so she makes the wide mouth and normally the traditional animation style that i've seen at least when they do that when they change the mouth shape for someone who is wearing lipstick the lipstick will disappear they chose not to make it disappear in this case and the lip looked really weird for a second. It just looked funny. And I don't know if this is one of those things of like, I'm just used to it disappearing. Like the color disappears and they just go with the black line. And so all of a sudden seeing her like entire face be a black line with red around, well, pink around it felt, it was like frog like, I don't know. It was like very, very unusual. I don't know if it's just something that I have to get used to. Or, um, and it's like a animation style that they like, or if it was something that was actually like, a, a, like, a, just not my preference. But I noticed that in that moment, because it was supposed to be like a moment where she's growing and experiencing changes as a human, and I'm just laughing at her for her face. So it's like, <laughs> one of those moments. But yeah, sound design I thought was fine. Out of that, I don't, like, I don't necessarily have, like, anything more to add. Yeah. It's just enjoyable. Like, I... I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah. Uh, So for clarification, OP is 
Gradation, Gradation by Kana Boon featuring Yuho Kitazawa. And then the ED is Trick Art by Ryujin Kiyoshi. Yeah. So, yeah. OP, I definitely enjoyed. Uh, ED, meh. Yeah, I feel like that's Could have done without. I mean, even the like animation differences on the OP and the ED. Like, OP, good. ED, meh. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. The ED, you watch to get to the credits, to get to the end scene. Yeah, or mm-hmm. even then, like, I would literally fast forward through the ED. Yeah. Whereas the OP, like, I would leave the OP on at times just because it's kind of a bop. Yeah, you could definitely jam out to the OP, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it was very seamless. I found that the transitions between the OP worked better than the transla- transitions for the ED. Oh, 100%. I think it was just because of how, like, jazzy the ED was. Mm. Like, it just it didn't transition well. Agreed. Yeah, agreed. So what do you give it? 8.5. I am kind of with you at like an 8. I think I'm going to give it an 8. Just to be, just to be. Almost. Normally on rom-coms, like we have such a drastic difference of opinion (laughs) whenever it comes to these things. So I'm honestly surprised that you are so close. Uh, Yeah, I actually enjoyed it. It gave me, uh, there was, I tell you what. It wasn't anywhere near as embarrassing as quite a lot of the uh, rom-coms that are very popular. I hate secondhand embarrassment. It's one of the worst feelings in the world. I would rather be sad than embarrassed. That's uh, <laughs> like, I. it's probably my least favorite feeling mm-hmm. of all of the feelings. Embarrassment sucks. I don't like it. I can't sit with it. It makes me incredibly uncomfortable. Not fun. So... The reason why I struggle with a lot of romances is, is I get embarrassed and I don't I don't want to do that for entertainment. I don't want to be that's not my idea of fun. I don't like it. <laughs> so like and in and sometimes there there are like my my biggest recall moment of probably the youngest I was when I was experiencing that feeling of just pure mortification that I hated was in Harry Potter and I think it's the Order of the Phoenix. Uh, but possibly, yeah. possibly the Goblet of Fire, when uh, um, he's look like Harry's looking across the Great Hall at lunchtime or dinner, and Cho Chang is at one of the tables, and he's got a mouthful of water, and he smiles, and it all leaks out of his face, and then the girls all laugh at him, and that moment, I think about it. I it didn't even <laughs> happen to a real person. I can't stand it. Horrible hate it that kind of thing happens in so many rom-coms where it's like it's cute and funny and they find it charming i don't i find it horrible (laughs) i would be sick don't (laughs) no not like if another person did it but because i i mentally put myself in characters shoes so often or like i'm their friend like i care about them as a person you know the fact that that happens to someone that i'm protective of can't can't do it (laughs) can't do it so that's why i don't like rom-coms this show doesn't have those kinds of moments. Mm-hmm. It's a very deep emotional connection that these two characters have, but they don't put themselves in situations... Like, the only time where any of the characters could possibly feel embarrassed is kind of really at the beginning when they're establishing everything, when you don't really know them as a character, so you don't feel embarrassed for them because you more feel sad for them. Like, with Akane and getting cheated on and then putting herself in the situation of going to the convention... And, like, just torturing herself because of all of the feelings that she's feeling. Like, there is a level of embarrassment there of, like, ah, hon, why are you putting yourself through that? But it's less embarrassment and more, like, compassion. Yeah. So, uh, I, so for that reason, I'm going to rank this higher than that because it didn't make me uncomfortable while watching it. I, it's one of those things to where I know whatever... <laughs> I schedule rom-coms like how much you are either going to enjoy or hate it honestly watching through this like I didn't like I never had a thought through any of it to where I was like Blue's gonna hate that yeah no and it was cute there were a good few number of moments where I was like oh like that's (laughs) it gives me that squealy I'm a teenage girl feeling and I that's a feeling that I don't mind I I kind of like that and and so I'm I'm not like a hundred, hundred against, hundred percent against rom coms in general. I just hate that a lot of the time the comedy aspect comes with a side of embarrassment. In this yeah. case, it didn't, so I'm good. Yeah, and again, that was one of those things to where going into it, I was like, okay, 
Blue's actually going to enjoy this more than most, just simply because like there are no bits where I'm like, ooh, she's gonna hate that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Where sometimes I'll be watching through something because most of the stuff that we cover here, I watch beforehand, like especially the newer stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I try to watch a lot of what's currently airing just to have an idea of what I think either we should cover or will be trashy enough <laughs> to cover. <laughs> and this is one of those where whenever I was watching it week to week, I was like, this is going to be an enjoyable time just to sit down and talk about it. And we've... This is the most we've talked about an anime in a very long time. Yeah. We started talking about the anime at like 45 minutes into it. And here we are an hour later still talking about it. Yeah, so, I was going to say. Yeah, so, I mean, obviously it was a good time and it was a good rom-com for us to actually be able to just sit here and discuss it. And you not to have any ick moments. Yeah, zero ick. Zero ick happened whilst watching this show, except for that fucking creepy dude at the cafe. He is ick. <laughs> yeah, but, that, that, that behavior yeah. was 100% ick. That wasn't yeah. like a bit in the anime. Yeah, that's no, just... That behavior ick. Don't be that guy. No, don't, don't be that, be that person. guy. <laughs> do not be that yeah. person in general. Like, don't, don't fucking do it. No, don't, don't go into, like, situations where people... You're going to make people actively uncomfortable. I get that he thought he was trying to help, but read the damn room. Like, yep. if you don't know a person, don't join them in the washroom. Yeah, no. <laughs> Definitely not. Like, just, no. Yeah. Like, oh. uh, yeah. yeah. Um, no. But yeah. Enjoyable time, though. Very enjoyable. 10 out of 10. Uh, cannot wait for a second season. Yeah, I hope there is a second season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, socials, uh, BNB Anime, literally everywhere, or Blues yeah. Lavenders, or Brad Carter Gaming, or Brad Garen VO. Just you'll you'll fucking find us guaranteed. Um, more TikTok content coming soon, so look forward to that. We'll post the shit on the socials, so you'll you'll find us. <laughs> um, yeah, this clips uh, from this will probably be on the TikTok. Yeah, I'm gonna have fun with this one because we've had some really good we've had some really good bits. Yeah uh hell might just turn like some of the bits into like their own separate like youtube videos too just for giggles who knows i don't fucking know yeah. i'm terrible at this B, &B um, talks dnd &D. yeah YouTube bit. youtube bit and uh next week kind of dr early. stone ah uh, yes science yeah science uh blue humored me this week so uh i humor her and by i humor her I mean, we both fucking love Dr. Stone, so it's it's going to be fun. Looking forward to it. Because I, honestly, I haven't seen anything past the first episode of season three. I was going to watch it week to week, and I was like, you know what? I know Dr. Stone. I just want to experience this with my best friend. So <laughs> yes. just, we'll just watch it through show. for the first time together and just talk about it. Yes. Yeah. Such excite. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And next week, you'll be hearing about Brad's concert experience. I'm so excited. It's <laughs> so, so very excited. Uh, videos will be up on the Instagram, guaranteed. Might be on TikTok. I don't know. Probably not. But definitely on the Instagram. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you all so much for listening. We appreciate it. Catch you all next week. Love you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>